Welcome back. We're going to stick to rolling dice in this video. I've always enjoyed how such a simple object can result in some really nice mathematics. I'm going to give you a question that we've recently used for some trading interviews here at Optiva. The idea is fairly straightforward. You're going to pick up a bunch of dice and roll them all at the same time. Your goal is to get exactly one six. My question to you is, how many dice should you roll in order to have the greatest chance of doing this? What do you think? When I ask this question to potential traders, their intuition is usually pretty good. They typically blurt out that they would choose to roll six dice. And I suppose it kind of makes sense. As the numbers from one to six are uniformly distributed in terms of likelihood, it kind of just feels like we will get one of each of them, in some average sense. So six dice kind of just feels right. But, and you know what I'm going to say, let's prove it. Our first step is to construct a mathematical expression for the probability of rolling n dice and getting exactly one six. We must force one of these n dice to be a six. We have n choices for which dice this is, and then there's a one six chance of it being a six. Then the remaining n minus one dice need to avoid six. There's a five on six to the power of n minus one chance of that. Therefore, we get the expression we want to maximize. n over six multiplied by five sixths to the power of n minus one. Of course, your binomial model formula will give you the same thing, but it can often be helpful to reason things out from scratch now and again. So the question becomes, for what value of n is this expression maximized? If the expression were a nice continuous function, then we could do the high school calculus thing where we differentiate with respect to n and then find the values of n that make the derivative equal to zero. This is not too hard to do. If we tenuously treat n as a continuous variable, then the derivative of the above expression can be obtained. To solve when this is equal to zero, well, we can scribble out the stuff out the front and rearrange to get that n is equal to negative one divided by the natural log of five sixths, which my calculator tells me is pretty close to five and a half. We can't really roll five and a half dice. In fact, it was considered bad manners to treat n as continuous in the first place. However, the result of it is still meaningful. The answer should be near five and a half dice. Street fighting mathematics might not be rigorous, but it often gets us close to where we need to get to without bothering us with epsilons and deltas. We've honed in now, let's see if we can finish this off. Let's go back to the expression for the probability of rolling exactly one six. Now, when we use calculus to find a maximum, we are effectively searching for the moment that the expression goes from rising to falling. We can apply that same idea here. What happens to our expression every time we increase n by one? In short, we do two things. We change the n out the front to an n plus one, and we increase the power of five on six. Changing n to n plus one is exactly the same as multiplying by n plus one over n. Increasing the power of five on six is the same as multiplying by five on six. Therefore, to go from pn to pn plus one, we are simply multiplying by the factor five on six times n plus one on n. Let's take a small value of n, such as n equals two. Then the above factor is equal to five fourths. This is a number greater than one, and so the original expression is still increasing from n equals two to n equals three because we're multiplying by something greater than one. 
For a larger value of n, say n equals 10, the factor becomes 11 over 12, which is less than 1. And so the expression is decreasing from n equals 10 to n equals 11. And where is that moment, that value of n, where we go from increasing to decreasing? We can basically look at the factor to see that n equals 5 makes it equal to 1. That is, to go from the probability for 5 dice to the probability for 6 dice, we multiply by 1, which means we do nothing. Very interesting. We can see at this point that the probability increases up to n equals 5, stays the same for n equals 5 and n equals 6, and then decreases towards 0 as n gets larger. Therefore, we have the answer. You can either roll 5 dice or 6 dice. In fact, it doesn't matter. Let's hone in on that. Why doesn't it matter? This is something that I'm going to turn over to you. I want to see who can provide the best explanation for why the probability is maximized at both 5 dice and 6 dice. I'll give you a more general maths puzzle to crack as well. Let's say that I want to roll some M-sided dice with the goal of getting exactly R6s. How many dice should I roll to maximize this probability? Come up with a solution and send it in. I'll leave you to it. See you next time.